Hi there, it's Sandy Allock with the Bible Journaling page. I missed last week, but I am back today with an easy page that those of you who lead groups might want to do with your Bible journaling groups because everybody can do this. It's inspired in some ways by this card from Cindy. And Cindy, I wanted you to hear this verse out loud so you haven't gotten an email yet to thank you. But therefore, encourage one another and build each other up just as in fact you are doing. That's what came to my mind when I opened your envelope and I stood there in the post office bawling like a baby. And I did not email you yet because I wanted this video to come out so you could hear me say thank you. So God bless you. But the page is in honor of the card in some ways. I'm not going to do all yellow flowers. I was tempted to do that, but I thought you guys might like to see the page with multiple colors of flowers. And it might be easier to see the difference between the flowers when they're all in different colors than if they were all just one giant blob of yellow. But I'm letting the colors run together, letting the purples and the pinks touch, that sort of thing. You can lift out some color. So I dried my brush off, cleaned it and dried it, and then just painted in some extra pink. If you're the kind of person who doesn't like your potatoes touching your peas, then you could certainly paint each circle and let them dry. You could also use templates and make them perfect, etc. But the technique I'm going to be doing for the doodling is so loose that none of that's going to matter. I just want to have some color in here and I'm going to be able to adjust any of the painting that I do and the drawing that I do once I get to that stage. So no worries. This is a no stress kind of page. So I'm going to paint a few of these circles that are small. I did decide not to paint the centers because I was having enough of the bleeding going on that I thought that would make more of a mess, so I just wait till later. And for anybody wondering, I don't do page prep. There's no page prep here. I do have a sheet of computer paper underneath just to keep the paint from running down the side of the Bible, because I am sloppy that way. So this helps to keep it just on this page. The border I'm gonna make in brown, in honor of the card, and it also is going to be a neutral color. So since it's neutral, the colors that are going to stand out will be the flowers. And this will form kind of a frame around the two pages. I am going to do the other page. I won't paint it here on camera for you, but it's a two-page spread that I want to do. And it's in an interleaved Bible, which means this page is blank. And then the opposite has words on it and that sort of thing. It, it runs that whole way through the whole Bible so that you have single pages that you can just go crazy with your artistic works on. But I wanted it to continue on the other side. So I decided I would paint a yellow, a very pale yellow across the background of all of it so that I could read the words through it. So if you have a yellow that's kind of opaque, meaning it'll make, it, it'll kind of cover up the words a little bit, then just water the paint way down and it should be plenty viewable. You should be able to read the words just fine. And once I had it all dry and ironed, and flattened out, you'll see the ironing at the end of the video because I'll have another layer of ironing to do. I just got out my Micron pens and started doodling. And doodling around the border, I deliberately made squiggly lines so that I would not be tempted to get out the ruler and try to be straight and perfect. Because as soon as I try to be perfect, and I goof one thing up and some line goes haywire, I start beating myself up. And beating yourself up is not the way to worship the Lord. And if you are worshiping the Lord while you're doing your Bible journaling, that is not a good attitude to have because this is a creative act of worship and it's not meant to be focused on ourselves and our imperfections. It's, it's supposed to be honoring of the Lord. So while I do this doodling, just very loosely over the shapes of the flowers, I thought I would tell you a story. And this is a story I may have told you before. I've told it so many times and given it in so many speeches that it might be one you know already. But a number of years ago, it was right after the big crash of 2008. So this would have been 2009. I was in Costco and I was expecting I was about to be fired. So I thought this was going to be maybe my last trip to Costco, my last moment of 
having a house, my last moment of everything, and that I was going to be fired and my life would be over and everything was a mess and the world was going to come to an end around me. Yes, I was in a bad way. <laughs> and I stood in front of the flowers and was just looking at them. And there was a lady who stopped and was standing next to me. And she asked if I was going to buy the flowers. And I said, no, I can't afford them. I was just looking. And she proceeded to tell me about her husband. And he was a man who bought her flowers all the time. They always had fresh flowers. And when he'd bring them home and he'd put them in the vase on the kitchen table, he would smile at her and he'd say, life is good. Even on days when their budget didn't stretch far enough to justify buying flowers, he bought them anyway. It was a reminder to her that things are going to be all right, that God's got this and that just don't worry, it's going to be fine. This too shall pass. And once she started telling me about the day he died, and I mean, it was this long conversation. I was a wreck. I was just a, a babbling idiot in, standing there in Costco. Okay, fine. I bought the flowers. <laughs> Well, I went home and I thought about her and her husband and the story every time I looked at them. And that got me to buy flowers the next time I was in the grocery store and the next time. And then I would pick flowers from a friend's garden sometimes, or I would pick wildflowers and have wildflowers in the house. I always had flowers ever since then. This is years that has have gone by and I've constantly had flowers and what the Lord has been doing in my heart of late is reminding me that I forgot why I've been having these flowers in the house, that I have been all stressed out about my repetitive stress injury to my hand. I've been really worried about that. I've been worried about the slow pace of all the things on my to-do list and how slow they're getting done because I can't be on the computer as long. I can't work on my art as long. I have to change up what I do and paint for a while, draw for a while, go in the garden for a while, rest for a while. There's this constant battle with my hands trying to get this injury to go away. I'm a single person and a solo entrepreneur. I can't just close the doors and say for 16 weeks, I'm going to do nothing. So I have to find adjustments I can make. And it's been frustrating. And God's been reminding me that life is good. And Cindy was totally a reminder of that. And lots of you have been as well. I've gotten so many social media messages and emails and stuff from everybody. Thank you so much for your love and prayers and support during this time just means so much to me that there's just so many people in my corner in that God's family is standing with me. I really appreciate it. And I apologize to anybody who either didn't get an email back when you emailed me asking about how I'm doing, or if I was short with you when I did, because I'm not answering anything that I don't have to. I normally get 150, 200 emails a day just in what I normally do. That just happens all the time. And when you add on extra emails, it just gets to be a lot. And I only answer the stuff that's on fire. <laughs> it's just how things have to be right now. But I want you to know that I appreciate all of you. I appreciate your advice and your prayers and your love. It means the world to me. And God has reminded me through all of it that life is good. So in this page, I'm adding a little bit more watercolor here at the end, uh, just brightening up a few colors. I wanted a little more yellow in the background. The extra color just makes sure that the wrapper around the bouquet looks that much whiter and brighter by contrast. But now that this is all wet, it needs to be dried. And so I let it dry by air and then wanted to iron it. So I have my iron set on cotton and I put a piece of paper above and below my page so that it will flatten out a little bit. And it doesn't make it perfect, but it makes it pretty good. Paper and water just always are going to argue with each other, so you're always going to have a little bit of wrinkling. But the iron does a pretty decent job of it. And there we go. Finished page. Easy to do for beginners, so if you have some people in your Bible journaling group that want to do something and be successful, this kind of flower bouquet is super easy and everybody can feel like they've done a good piece of art when they finish. 
So that's it for me. I will see you all again next week. God willing and the creek don't rise. And I will talk to you then. Take care and have a blessed week. Bye-bye.